Hello everyone, I want to do a quick video on how to uh, change or update an employee's direct deposit information in ISOL. So when you first log in, you should land on your client landing page right here, which is normal. Uh, then we want to come up to employee management up here under this, this menu item here, and then we want to go down to employee pay. And underneath employee pay, you will see um, all of these different menu items where you come down here to the direct deposit menu item right here. Click on that. It's going to show you your employees that you have listed here. You just choose the employee that you want to work with. We're going to choose the right said Fred right here. <clears throat> go into his record. You can see he has one uh, direct deposit amount account in here. It is a checking. It is active. It is putting all of his net pay into this account every pay period. There's the routing number. There's the account number. Uh, and if you want to come in and take a look at that, you can. If you're going to end a direct deposit on an employee, you would want to come in here and click on the pencil icon to edit it and just simply move it from active to inactive and then save it. And now that is now inactive. And if you do not bring in another direct deposit, that means that employee is going to get paid a live check on the next payroll. Uh, but let's say he just wanted to deactivate this one and activate a new one. <clears throat> so we've inactivated this one and now we want to add a new one in. We want to click on add new. Status type is going to be active. Account type is going to be a checking account. Sequence, again, because it is going to be the only one active, we're going to say it's a remaining net, which means that everything out of his net pay goes into this account every pay. We would put in the routing number right here that we would want <clears throat> um, in there. Let me grab that routing number real quick. Drop the routing number in there, and then the account number. We just put it right in there. And you can put a description in there if you'd like to, but I don't know if there's much need for that. And just click on Save from there. And now you can see that he has one active and one inactive account. So you can kind of get that history of what's going on in there, which is good to know. Um, our recommendation also is that if you're going to make a change to an account, <clears throat> that we would end the previous or the current direct deposit and add in a new one. Um, you do have the ability in the system, without a doubt, <clears throat> to update an account number here. However, our best practice is that we would end this one and start a new one with a corrected account number. This will give you a history so that if for some reason there's an employee return because the account number was entered incorrectly, this will then tell you what happened. So you would have this one, which may have an incorrect number in there. We can come in here and edit this. We can make it inactive, which is fine. And then we can put in description, <clears throat> wrong account number. And we can save that. So now that's an active, and then we'd go back in and add in the new one again. So we go active, account type is checking, sequence is remaining net, frequency is every pay period, routing number, and account number. And then we click on save. And then now you'd have <clears throat> the new account with the new account number in there. So, and then you still have an, an idea of why this one was deactivated um, in the past. Now let's assume that the employee has two direct deposits. They want their money split between, their paycheck split between multiple accounts. <clears throat> so in this situation, you'd have this one that was active right here. Then we want to go ahead and add a new one. And the process is pretty much the same. We want to say that it's active. Account type, let's say it's a savings account. The sequence is what really changes. So the sequence now is one. You see the remaining net is not there anymore because the remaining net is already taken up on the primary account. So sequence is one. Uh, if they want a set dollar amount taken every pay period, <clears throat> they can do percentages if they'd like. It's a little hard to calculate that based on uh, if they're an hourly employee, the system will do that for them. But So that would change every pay period. But if they want a fixed amount, you just put a dollar amount in there, put the routing a number in there and the account number in there. And then you just click on save and away you go. And that's how we add in multiple accounts. Thanks. I hope this was helpful and we'll see you on the next video.